Is this thing on? Yeah, it is. All right, welcome back to the Bandwagon Sports Show. I am your host, Shoot to Rock, and we are here with some baseball talk today. I know it's been a lot of football lately, but I've been very locked in on the MLB postseason baseball. It's my favorite sport. Sadly, I'm not able to make a lot of videos about it over the summer just because I work in baseball and then was on vacation for the wild card series and the uh, AL and NLDS, so didn't get to make my predictions there, but going to kind of touch on those series a little bit as well as make my predictions here for the AL and NLCS and kind of recap the first couple games of that series. So if you're watching here on YouTube and you like baseball content, comment your picks down below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you like any sports, not just baseball, because like I said, I've been talking a lot of football, college basketball, the AP and Ken Palm rankings both dropped today, and tip-off is uh, three weeks, three weeks from Monday as I'm recording this. So a lot, of, a lot of big stuff coming here. NHL started, NBA starts, if you're watching this, week from today as well. So we, we got a lot of stuff coming here, so make sure to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. So first, we are going to start off in the NL, just since that series has had more games played. It's currently sitting at 1-1 after the Mets knocked off the Dodgers today. But first, I just kind of want to get into uh, how these teams got there, kind of give my takes on that a little bit. So... The Mets, for the third year in a row, they're the sixth seed, and they find themselves in the NLCS. All three years since the MLB has expanded the postseason to six teams in each league, the sixth seed has made the NLCS at least, and honestly, they've, they've made the World Series every year, so we'll, we'll see if that trend continues. So the Mets knocked off the Phillies in the last round. After surviving the Brewers in the wild card round, it took a Pete Alonzo homer off of Devin Williams, you know, one of the best relievers in the game. A uh, big shot for him, gave the Mets the lead. Jesse Winker would end up scoring in that game too, uh, slamming his, his helmet down at home plate. You know, he's got a lot of beef with the Brewers. He was on that squad last year, didn't perform well, and the, the fans let him know about it. So the Mets, they'd come from behind and knock off the Brewers, and then the Phils, and knock off the Phils. You know, Zach Wheeler had a really good game, game one pitching for Philadelphia, but uh, once he got out of the game, New York was able to get to his bullpen. And then game two, you know, the Phillies won back and forth game. Nick Castellanos had a tying home run, then also had the walk-off hit. But then, you know, the Mets, they came to play in New York. Uh, they won game three. And then game four, you know, they were trailing once again. But Francisco Lindor with the grand slam that put the Mets here in the NLCS. They're taking on the Dodgers. The Dodgers, once again, found themselves down 2-1. to one in the NL or NLDS. The Dodgers, all three years in this new format, have been trailing, or even last year they were they got swept last year. But two years ago against the Padres, lost a series in four games. You know, trailing four one. They hadn't won a road playoff game, and you know they weren't looking good. They lost they lost game three six to five. But from the third inning on of game three through the remainder of that series, the Dodgers shut out the Padres, winning eight nothing in game four, and then two nothing in game five on Friday. Kike Hernandez hit the big home run. And Teoscar Hernandez, sorry, both Hernandezes, they went they went yard with the big hits for the Dodgers that got the Dodgers in the NLCS here. And the Dodgers, they kept that scoreless streak going in the game one. Game one, they knock off the Mets 9-0. So let's just recap it here quick. So starts off, they, they start off hot. First inning, two-run single for Max Muncy, scoring both Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, who was back in the lineup. He was in the lineup game five as well of the NLDS, but, you know, he's, he's been battling some injuries here. But, you know, essentially playing on one leg, but he's in the lineup. He's grinding. And then they, they add on again second inning. Shohei Otani, you know, the big star. They got how many batters away till Shohei Otani. They keep showing that. He singles to right, scoring Gavin Lux 3-0. Then Tommy Edmond in the fourth inning scores scores Kike Hernandez 4-0 Dodgers. Then also adding on the fourth inning was the big inning for the Dodgers. They scored uh, they scored three runs as a whole that inning. Yeah, that was their, their biggest inning of the game. Uh, Otani, another RBI single, scoring Tommy Edmond. Um, and then on a throwing error, Otani is able to get to second. Then the fourth, Freeman's, and the error allowed Otani to score on a Freeman single, making it 6 nothing. And then a bases clearing double in the eighth inning. You know, the game was already over then by Mookie Betts scoring Kike Shohei and Kevin Kiermeyer. So 9 nothing, Dodgers cruise. It looks like, all right, now, now they're red hot. Maybe, maybe this one's over. 
Uh, let's kind of just look here at the box score quickly in that one. Like I mentioned, big game, big game from Shohei, big game from all the, all the Dodgers stars really showed up. Yeah, Shohei two for four with an RBI. Uh, Mookie Betts one for four with three RBIs. And then uh, Max Muncie you had was one for four with two RBIs as well in that game. So lot, lots of lots of hitting all around. Kodai Senga went for the Mets in that game, and it was only his third start of the year because in his season debut against Atlanta back in July, he got hurt, pitched two innings against against the Phillies in the one game that they lost, and then now once again only went 1.1 innings pitched, giving up three earned runs and four walks. So it was not not a good game for him. You know, allowed the Dodgers to get off to that early lead. And we'll we'll have to kind of see if the Mets go back to him here in the postseason. Just like I said, been dealing with injuries. He hasn't pitched a bunch, so not not great for him so far. But on the other end, Jack Flaherty pitched a really good game. He's been pitching well this postseason. He went seven innings, only gave up two hits, no earned runs, six strikeouts, and only two walks. So Flaherty's dealing. Uh, he's probably the Dodgers' best starter that they have going right now just with all the injuries and stuff. So I think they're going to keep relying on Flaherty. And we'll, we'll see how far that takes him. But the Mets, it was a completely different story here in Game 2. You know, Mets get dominated Game 1. You think, oh, okay, here, here's L.A. They're just going to roll away with this series. Well, no. Mets jumped all over the Dodgers in Game 2. They start off Francisco Lindor, solo homer. Like I said, he hit a big big homer in Game 4 of the NLDS. And while he's back back on his hidden ways, homers to right, one nothing Mets. Then in the second, Tyrone Taylor with a double scoring uh, Starling Marte and Jesse Winker, or no, I'm sorry, just just Marte. Winker got to third, and then would come around and score as part of Mark Vientos, a big grand slam, knocked it wide open. Six nothing Mets here in the sixth inning. The Dodgers, unlike the Mets on Sunday, the Dodgers did have a response here on Monday. Max Muncie, you know, he homers in the fifth inning, cut it to six to one, and then Tommy Edmonds single scoring Mookie and Teoscar Hernandez make it 6-3, to three. but that would be all the scoring from the Dodgers. Starling Marte added a added a RBI base hit that scored Pete Alonso in the ninth to give the Mets some insurance, and that did it. Mets, Mets win 7-3 to three in this one. For them, it was their their guy that's really been starting out. Sean Mania, another good game for him. He went five innings pitched, two hits, only gave up two earned runs, four or seven strikeouts, only four walks. A really good game for him pitching. This was a bullpen game for the Dodgers. Did not go well. Ryan Brazier gets the loss. And his innings pitched in the first inning, you know, he gave up that home run. And it was just kind of all downhill from there for the Dodgers. So bullpen game worked in game four against the Padres. Did not work against the Mets in game two here of the NLCS. It's kind of looking here at the box score, like I mentioned. Uh, Francisco Lindor is one, one, his homer, also also drew a walk. And then Vientos, two two for five, including the big grand slam, four RBIs. He's had he's had a couple homers now. He has had three homers on the year. He's hit, he's hitting the ball pretty well. I want to see what his average is here in the postseason right now. Three seventy eight average for Mark Vientos in the postseason. So really good, really good uh, for him. You know, you need guys to step up like that if the if you're gonna go on a run, it's kind of here like the Mets have. Pete Alonso went one for four. Starting Marte, really good game for him. Three for five, only one RBI, but getting those hit all those hits that's big. Really helped the Mets win this one. Jose Iglesias one for five, so okay game for him. Tyrone Taylor one for three, so yeah, that that was really kind of it. Uh, a diff- couple different guys, you know, getting it done for the Mets on the Dodgers side. Shohei not a good game for him. 0 for three with two strikeouts, did draw two walks. Mookie Betts also, you know, did not show up today. Three strikeouts for him going 0 for four, did draw a walk as well. Uh, Teoscar 0 for three, but two walk with two strikeouts as well. Two two walks at least for him. So a lot a lot of guys striking out. Freddie Freeman struck out. Will Smith struck out. Andy Pa has two strikeouts at least. He got a hit. He won four four. So we'll see here, man. Like this, I think this is gonna be a very competitive series. We we saw you know Dodgers Dodgers hit first, but the Mets punch right back. So we're one one now here going to New York. Next three games are in New York. Potentially, if the Mets win all three, or if the Dodgers win all three, like the get the series may not go back to LA, but. My prediction, I think it definitely will. So like I mentioned, before this NLDS against the Padres, the Dodgers had not won a road playoff game since Game 5 of the 2021 NLDS. But now, you know, they, they break that curse, they win Game 4, keep their season alive. The Mets Mets are Mets have been playing pretty well at home. I mean, won both games in the DS at home. You know, they got the crowd buzz and they got the OMG, like I said, the Jose Iglesias' song. They got the Grimace. Grimace is going wild. Some Grimace shakes out there. So I, I think it's going to be tough for the Dodgers to win in New York, but I think they do. I think they do. I think 
The series goes back to New York or goes back to LA. 3-2 Mets. I think the Mets will have the series lead. I can see them, you know, I, I say Mets win game three. Mets win game three. Maybe Dodgers. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go Mets can win game three, Dodgers win game four, Mets win game five. But then I think the Dodgers, I think they're gonna take game six and seven at home and and make their way to the World Series. So I, I got the Dodgers coming out of the NL for me. Now we flip over to the American League. And as we can see here, my New York Yankees. They took down the Kansas City Royals in four games to make it to this ALCS. And now they face the Cleveland Guardians. Cleveland had to win a game five. They trailed in their series two to one against Detroit. Detroit was red hot, but they were able to squeak out a win in game four. But then, you know, it looked like that might be the end of the ride because Tariq Skubal, who had just been absolutely dealing for Detroit in this playoffs, you know, he pitched a shutout, shutout in game two. Pitched really well against the Astros in the wild card series. He was the one taking the bump for the Tigers. But finally, Cleveland got to him. It was Lane Thomas, the trade deadline acquisition for the Guardians. He hit a grand slam after Jose Ramirez was hit by a pitch. Broke the game wide open. 5-1 Cleveland in the in the fifth inning. They end up going on to win the game 7-3. Like I said, I didn't see that coming. Kerry Carpenter, who had the big homer for Detroit in Game 2, you know, he was the one that started the scoring in the fifth inning, got Detroit their one run, and there was part of me that was kind of like, that That might really be all the Tigers need. But Guardians, they rallied, like I said, Jose Ramirez drew a hit by pitch to tie the game, and then Lane Thomas went yard for the grand slam. And then, Cle- you know, Detroit Detroit added, made it a game. Spencer, I'm sorry, Jake Rogers scored Spencer Torkelson. And then Colt Keith scored uh, Riley Green. You know, it was it was 5-3. It was a close game. But then Lane Thomas, once again, singled, scored uh, scored Stephen Kwan, make it 7 or 6-3. And then Brian Rocchio, who's been red hot, had a single to score Andre Jimenez in the eighth inning, 7-3. Cleveland won. They now find themselves here in the ALCS, taking on the Yanks two days later. And it kind of it kind of showed a little bit that Cleveland was the team that was, wasn't as rested, that New York, you know, they'd been off since Thursday. They're playing here at home because they win game one, 5-2. to two. Uh, Carlos Rodon, people were kind of clowning him. He lost he lost game two. He did have a good start, but then got had a blow-up inning against Kansas City. So he mounts back. He had a really good performance. I want to give him a lot of credit. He went, let me pull up his line here. Carlos Rodon, six innings pitched, only three hits, only gave one earned run, nine strikeouts. His only his only earned run was a home run from Brian Rocchio, who, like I just mentioned, he's been red hot. So I want to give Carlos Rodon his flowers. Pitched really well today and responded to the haters. So let's just recap the scoring here as a whole quick. I just realized I didn't do that. So like I mentioned, it was Juan Soto, the big trade acquisition in the offseason for the Yanks. He's going to be a free agent. Hopefully they bring him back. I'm hoping they bring him back. I mean, whatever team you're a fan of, you're probably hoping your team can sign him. He shows why he's worth all that money. Opens the scoring. Solo homer to center field. one nothing Yanks in the third inning. So in the third inning, after Soto's homer, that's kind of when it all fell apart. First, Judge walked. After Austin Wells struck out, Stanton drew a walk. Uh, Jazz Chisholm flat out. So there's two outs in the inning. Looks like, looks like the Guardians might get out of it. Then Anthony Volpe walks. So then they bring in Joey Cantillo. First, we have Judge score on a wild pitch from Cantillo. He then walks Rizzo, so the bases are loaded once again. And then another wild pitch scores Stanton. So before you know it, 3 nothing Yankees. Uh, big big inning for them there, and that's kind of you know what Cleveland wants to avoid. They do not want to go down early, go down multiple runs, especially with Rodon dealing the way he was. Then Aaron Judd, he's struggled this postseason, hasn't had the big hit, the big homer, but he did have a sack fly then in the fourth inning that scored Glaber Torres, extending the lead to 4 nothing Yanks. Brian Rocchio did, like I mentioned, hit a home run, cut the lead 4-1, to one, but then responded John Carlos Stanton. He's really been the big slugger this postseason for the Yanks. His third home run of the postseason, solo to left center field, makes it 5-1 Yanks. Stephen Kwan had a single that scored Andres Jimenez in the eighth inning to make it 5-2, to two, you know, make it a little bit close. Guardians had runners on the corners, but then Luke Weaver came in, five-out save, got the job done, sealed the win for the Yanks, so 5-2 win in game one, and now game two is tomorrow. Just kind of looking here at the Yanks box score. Uh, Aaron Judge, like I mentioned, or I'm sorry, Juan Soto, two for three with an RBI, that big home run. He did also have a walk and a strikeout. 
Aaron Judge 0 for 2, but he did have that sack fly and a walk on top of a strikeout in the first inning. That was tough to see. Like I mentioned, average is only 133 here in the postseason. He's going to need to get that up if the Yankees are going to go all the way. John Carlos Stanton, big night for him, 1 for 3, including that home run and also drew a walk with no strikeouts, so good game for him. Uh, Anthony Rizzo was back playing first base night. He got a hit, 1 for 3, also drew a walk, so good, good game. He'll take that. And then uh, Verdugo also with one for three with with a walk as well, but two strikeouts for him. So the Yanks, you know, they got the big hits. They were relying a little bit here on the long ball in the big inning. So we'll see if they can get that again against Cleveland in game two. On the Cleveland side, like I mentioned, Stephen Kwan, one for four with an RBI. Uh, David Fry went one for three as well. And then uh, Unueski Noel, one for two. But he struck out. I mean, that was that was it. Oh, and then Andres Jimenez, one for three with a hit. But two strikeouts for him. Brian Rocchio, two for three. Big hitter for the night for Cleveland with that home run and a strikeout. So Cleveland, their bats, all right. You know, they're going to they're gonna need more offense. A lot of strikeouts there. I mean, only, only six hits on the night. That's probably not going to do it if the Yanks keep hitting the way they are. Like I mentioned, Alex Cobb gets the loss in this one. Only two and a two-thirds innings pitched. Giving up five hits, three runs with three walks. And then Joey Cantillo really struggled. He only got one out. And, I mean, technically only one of those runs was assigned to him, but three walks as well. Not a, not a good night for him. That's kind of what did the Guardians in. But unlike the NLCS, the ALCS here saw the top-seeded Yankees take a 2-0 series lead tonight, winning 6-3 over Cleveland. And they caught some breaks here in the first. Let's get into this recap. So first, after a fielding error on a pop fly by Aaron Judge, uh, Brian Rocchio can't field it. It was pretty windy at Yankee Stadium tonight. Uh, results in Glaber Torres scoring. Glaber's been hitting really well. You know, got another hit to get on base in that inning. Uh, Yanks were Yanks were threatening, but it was it was that error that really did it for him because other than that, they didn't they wouldn't have scored any runs in the first inning if it wasn't for that error. So that makes it one nothing Yanks. Then in the second inning. Alex Verdugo doubles to left, scoring Anthony Volpe. Anthony Rizzo then went to third on that play and then ended up scoring on Aaron Judge's sack fly. So 3 nothing Yanks. They're once again off to a red-hot start, something Cleveland couldn't have. Not a, not a great night for Tanner Bybee. He only made it one in the third innings. But Cleveland does respond in the fifth inning. Josh Naylor with a sack fly to right, scoring Stephen Kwan. Uh, and then Manzaro goes to third on that and then comes around to score on Will Brennan's grounder that results in a fielder's choice. So... Yanks cut or Cleveland Cleveland cuts the lead three to two. Garrett Cole got pulled in that inning. Uh, Clay Holmes was the one. He's not going to be charged with the run. It was one of Cole's runners, but he gets the Yankees out of the inning. That was really kind of Cleveland's chance. You know they had the bases loaded, could have potentially tied the game if they were not able to get home the tying run. It went to third on that on that uh, on that fielder's choice there I just talked about. But then the Yanks reply. In the sixth inning, Anthony Rizzo, really good night for him. A double to right field, scores Anthony Volpe, and that makes it 4-2 to two Yanks. And then Aaron Judge, he finally does it. His first homer of the postseason in the seventh inning, scores him and Glaber, two-run homer, makes it 6-2 Yanks. Before Jose Ramirez does add a home run, solo home run in the ninth for the Guardians to cut the lead to 6-3, but that'd be all she wrote. Once again, Yankees win. Clay Holmes gets credit for the wins. Like I mentioned, I'll get into his stats here in a sec. Not a great night for uh, Garrett Cole, but Clay Holmes came in, shut the door when Cleveland or when the Yankees needed it most. When Cleveland was threatening, Tanner Bobby, like I mentioned, not a great night for him. He suffers a loss. He only went one in the third inning, giving up five hits, two earned runs. Cleveland starters in the first two games combined here have only gone a total of four innings. So. Not good. They're going to need a lot better starting pitching. Like I said, it wasn't really great starting pitching for the Yankees tonight either. Garrett Cole, four and a third, giving up six hits, two runs, four walks, did have four strikeouts. But if you had to ask me going into the series who I thought would have a much better start, like who I was more confident in, it definitely would have been Garrett Cole over Carlos Rodon just because Cole pitched so well against Kansas City, where Rodon was the opposite, did not pitch well. But the Yankees bullpen stepped up again. I mean, like I said, Clay Holmes got him out of the jam. Tim Hill had a really good inning going one one and two thirds, didn't give up any hits, had a strikeout. Tommy Canley went one and a third, only gave up one hit, one walk, had a strikeout as well. And then Luke Weaver once again gets shuts the door. I guess it wasn't a safe situation. They they brought him in down four or up by four. So that seemed kind of odd, especially having him go for five outs last night, but off day here, so might might as well get him use him. 
Uh, Cleveland Sally, I mentioned, I already mentioned Bybee's line. Uh, all their other pitchers really, you know, nothing, nothing too bad. All, all kind of held it other than Hunter Gaddis. He gave up uh, two hits, two runs in his inning pitched, including that home run to judge. So that's kind of what ended the game there for, for uh, Cleveland. So now looking at the hitting box score, Glaber Torres, man, he's been red hot. He went three for five tonight with two RBIs, or two. he scored twice, didn't have any RBIs. He's been hitting leadoff. Juan Soto with another hit, one for three, and drew a walk. Aaron Judge, that's who I'm really, like, happiest with. He finally got off the schneid. One for three, three RBIs, hit that homer. Didn't walk today, but three RBIs, you'll take it. Uh, Austin Wells has been struggling. They probably have to move him down the lineup. He went 0 for four with two strikeouts. Stanton, not a great game for him, 0 for four. Uh, Jazz got a hit, one for four for him, but one strikeout as well. So not not Jazz hasn't really been playing too well as of late either. His average is down to 130 here in the postseason. Might want to move him down the lineup because Anthony Volpe once again two for three with a walk. Anthony Rizzo two for four. So he had a good game, and then Verdugo went one for three with an RBI. So the bottom of the order is really hitting, kind of stepping up for some of those guys like Chisholm, Wells, and then Judge before tonight who hadn't been hitting. On the Cleveland side, Stephen Kwan went one for four with a walk. Uh, Manzardo was one for five, struck out once. Jose Ramirez was the big hitter, one one for four with an RBI, home run, Andrew a walk. Uh, Josh Naylor went two for four with an RBI. Lane Thomas, one for three with two walks as well, so he was threatening. Will Brennan had an RBI despite going 0 for four with a strikeout. Andre Jimenez, 0 for two, but drew two walks, struck out once. And then Brian Rocchio went two for four, so kind of kept it up, but he did strike out twice and, like I said, had that costly error in the first inning. So probably not the best game that you'd want from him. So like I mentioned, the Yankees are now up 2 nothing in this series. I don't think it's going to be a sweep by any means. I definitely do not think that. Going into the series, my prediction was Yankees in six games because I think for sure I'm going to go – Cleveland wins. I think they respond. They win game three. Like, they had their chances in these games. I mean, they, they had eight hits tonight. The Yankees only had 11. It was really just two errors that did them in. I believe last game it was both teams had six hits. I was kind of, like, shitting on the Guardians being like, oh, they only had six hits. But now, now I'm kind of thinking back to it. I'm like, the Yan- Yankees only had six hits as well. So it wasn't like the Yankees are turning the cover off the ball. They've just – the Yankees have taken advantage of drawing walks and then now tonight Cleveland errors. So – I don't think by any means like the Yankees have really just like dominated these games. Uh, they've just kind of probably made more. They've made the most of their opportunities, but there's also been s- spots where they haven't just because they've left they've left runners on base. Let's see. Let's look here. They with runners in scoring position yesterday they were 0 for 7. Looking here at the Yanks today with runners in scoring position they went 2 for 10. So on the series they're 2 for 17 with runners in scoring position. Maybe that'll work against Cleveland. It's not going to work in the next round if the Yankees get there. A lot of people are saying Yankees easy path this year. I mean, people got to put respect on Cleveland. Like Cleveland is a good team. You know, they were competing for that top um, seed in the American League all year. They right there with the Yankees. Manuel Classe honestly could have a case to win Cy Young as a reliever, which is very hard to do. Jose Ramirez, one of the better players in baseball. And while, like I said, I kind of thought a little bit all these AL Central teams was just them beating up on the White Sox. I mean, they clearly showed that's not the case. Three of the four DS teams outside the Yankees were AL Central teams. Like, they can play ball. They're competitive teams. And people are trying to say, oh, like, the MLB is trying to rig it. They want the Yankees in. Like, I, I disagree. I don't really see what the MLB gains from rigging the World Series. Yes, do you have great storylines with either Yankees-Mets? You know, you got a rematch of the Subway Series here. The shirt I'm wearing from 2000, you know, you get it 24 years later. Yankees Dodgers, you know, you have the two biggest brands of baseball, two, you know, superpowers. But honestly, like Cleveland, Cleveland's a good story too. Like, people love the underdog. The Mets are not the underdog. I don't know why people are trying to paint the Mets as the underdog this season. Look at the Mets payroll. They, they in no world are they an underdog. Like that narrative is just so funny to me. Cleveland's the underdog. And we saw last year, last year's World Series the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. It was two wild card teams. Like I mentioned, three the two other years of the NL having this six six uh, team format, the six seed has made it. Like the MLB is not rigging these things like for the Yankees. Like that's just not a thing. I think that narrative is very silly. Which I'm gonna go with my prediction. Like I said, I think Cleveland wins Game Three. But I'm gonna go Yankees win Game Four, go up three one. 
And then, you know what? I'm going to switch it. I'm, I'm more confident. I like what I've seen from the Yankees. I think the Yanks ended in five. Give me the Yankees in five. So they're going to be taking on the Dodgers, who I think win in seven. The World Series that I hinted at, I thought that could potentially be what, what it's going to be back in June is what I had as my World Series prediction here now in October. Granted, not a super hot take. I, I'm picking like the two like highest payrolls, two biggest brands in baseball. So I think a lot of people saw that World Series coming. So I'm not I'm not going to toot my horn, own horn too much, but... That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Dodgers, Yankees, World Series. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, as I mentioned before, make sure to drop a like on the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you if you enjoy the baseball content. I'm going to try to keep rolling it out here the rest of the postseason. And make sure to comment your picks while you're down there liking and subscribing to the video, to the channel. If you're on Spotify, make sure to follow and rate the show five stars. We're going to have a lot of content coming here, guys. College basketball dropped their polls today. I've been, you know, writing writing some college football rankings. Hope you guys have been checking those out. I would tweet them out and as well as post them on my Instagram. So I'm going to start trying to do some college football content as well as we get here to the playoff. We had some big games this past weekend. A lot of storylines there. NFL's in full swing. Hockey started up. If you guys want to see some hockey content, let me know. I'm more than happy to make that. And then NBA starts next week. So once it, once basketball season hits, that's really, you know, when I'm, I'm shooting to rock for a reason. You know, basketball's my sport. I'm really going to be into it. So... Make sure to follow along on this ride. I appreciate all you guys who have been supporting me. It means a lot to me, and I'll see you next time. Peace.